there guys, it's Joey, and this is the Ogham vlog for the Ogham or, or Spindle. So we're a little bit late on this one because I've had a little bit of poor health here and there. Um, my partner has had a little bit of ill health here and there. So it's been one of those weeks. So just to quickly retouch on some of the meanings. Sudden insight, enlightenment, purification. I think, I think really that's that's all we need to touch on. If you want to know the meanings deeper, again go back to the connecting video. Also connected to the pheasant, which I wondered if that might come up a little bit this week. It didn't end up coming up very much this week at all. I did note that I was going to see Maleficent this week, which ironically fits with the spindle, um, the line from the Disney animated movie, Touch the Spindle, Touch It I Say. And she was one of my favourite Disney characters when I was little, and she had a raven. <laughs> so the movie is really good, it's interesting, not without its problems, but uh, very much worth a watch, I really enjoyed it. At the beginning of the week I felt very connected to the Two of Wands imagery, especially from the Puman Lordek, even though I hadn't done a reading. And it came to me that that imagery was actually to do with path walking. And I wrote this, uh, Jerome Morris, 2014, All Rights Reserved. In every step along our path there is a choice. Sometimes it can be very hard to see, but it's always there. We have the choice to be better today than we were yesterday, or fall into old patterns of behaviour that get us nowhere new. Repeating the same old mistakes doesn't lead to wisdom. Only removing ourselves from destructive patterns can do that. Embrace the fire that burns away all that no longer serves and take the first steps towards a new dawn. And there's a couple of quotes here. If you dance with your heart, your body will follow. Maya Michaels. Find strength in silence. Watch to see the truth before taking action. K. Dunbar, Sea Wolf Journey. So that sort of set the framework for the week. There was a lot <clears throat> of that balanced with purification this week. There was a lot of purification this week. And because of that, my notes are somewhat lessened. But I'm going to talk about the purification bit here. So with getting sick, that's sort of my body purifying itself of germs and whatever and coming through that is that purification process it's obviously not always an easy thing and I talked about spiritual growth in the video about Morrigan yesterday spiritual growth being a difficult process and it's actually like a self cleanse of everything that no longer serves you and it's often a really difficult process so it can often result in physical sickness I also deep cleansed both my altars this week and I recommend anybody doing that at least once a month. Probably once a month for a deep cleanse as long as you are cleansing on a, on a regular basis, as long you know if you're working with it regularly. And for deep cleansing your altar, I mean taking everything off it, physically cleaning it, um, I use Florida water. I've used Florida water for many, many, many years. I actually had a really weird relationship with it. I've started using it at the very beginning of my path and loved it. And then I couldn't find it for years. And then it's gained popularity again in more recent times and I've been able to get a hold of it. And, you know, you can make your own, but it involves having vodka and vodka make... I think, I'm pretty sure it's vodka. And... Um, <clears throat> Vodka makes me feel quite ill. So, you know. So I deep cleanse my altars, take everything off it, clean them down with the Florida water, um, smudge it, use my swan feather, which is in shot, um, cleanse everything on a physical sense and a spiritual sense, and have a good deep cleanse of those spaces through which I honour deity. That seemed important this week. There's been a lot of Black Panther imagery this week. 
um, at the beginning of the week. And this is some of the meanings to that. Powerful and protective presence, courageous valor, power, solar vibrancy. Black panther has the greatest mysticism associated with it of all panthers. It is the symbol of the mother, the dark moon, and the power of the night. Black Panther encourages us to understand the shadow powers available to us all, acknowledge these powers and eliminate our fears of the darkness. When Black Panther appears in your life, it is also a symbol of releasing your passions and starting a new phase of life, a phase in which you are discovering your desires and living your dreams. We must pay attention to the strength of our inner being, our internal fortitude, and the condition of our spiritual strength and valour. Panther also beckons us to consider the darker side, analyse this side of ourselves and determine its motivations. So that's again talking about that new beginnings, about reassessing yourself, that sort of thing. More hints of the importance of spinning from an article on the Germanic Frau Hall from South Hemisphere Pagan. She is a supernatural matron of spinning, childbirth and domestic animals. Although not directly linked to the Celtic path, the information is interesting and hints again at the importance of symbolism and themes underlying mythology and, and, and legend and lore, I guess. Spinning was associated as a woman's chore, an activity with strong magical connotations and links to the other world, associated with witchcraft. And some stories hold was associated with the wild hunt. There have been a lot of hints about me um, doing Karunanos for the Celtic calling and I ended up not being well enough to do the Celtic calling last week so I'm gonna do that this week. We will get that done this, this week at some point. <clears throat> I found an absolutely stunning piece of artwork with a tree, a Celtic tree, with a Celtic cross embroidered on it, and a sword and a mask hanging from it, and a fox with a broken collar pouring a crown in front of it. It read Bona na Cloin, which means neither your collar nor, nor your crown, which Natalie let me know. Charlie also noted it was very druidic shaman, the mask and the sword of truth cutting through the mind fog, journeying with the cunningly skillful fox who evades danger. That imagery spoke to me this week, it's on my Facebook page if you're on there. Um, there was, you know, neither your collar nor your crown. It's interesting, isn't it? Neither to rule you nor to break you, but instead to empower you, to seek your inner self, to go and find the truth of yourself and find where you're going from here and Fox being my totem so of course it completely tied into me and my journey. There is this quote from Tevi Tempest Williams with a picture of a red beech tree. If you know wilderness in the way that you know love you would be unwilling to let it go. This is the story of our past and it will be the story of our future. So beech tree <coughs> is basically the tree that speaks to me most, the, the red beech. And so therefore this spiritual message made me sit up and take notice. I got some incredible gifts this week from Sharon, including an abalone shell, which is now on the altar, which is a gift for those who have survived traumatic experiences, <coughs> to let them know that whilst they've been tossed and turned, in the end, their true beauty shines for all to see. Enhances feelings of peace, beauty, compassion and love. Use when working through tough emotional issues. And then I saw a picture of that on Facebook with crystals in it. And I shared that because I thought, you know, oh, here, there's another picture of this. It's obviously got meaning this week. And it's actually become part and parcel of my other altar. With the crystals in as to do with emotional healing and things of that nature. The agate a hydrogeode, which is in shot, the water agate, helps one to recognise and understand the true feelings of another, supports empathic states, <coughs> helps you work through stress and healing, as well as 
depth of, a, um, of imagination balancing with practicality. There's also something really mystical about it. It's like looking into the ocean and it's basically almost a scrying tool, almost that for inner introspection, almost a tool for the messages of this week, for going inward, for deciding what you want in your life and going for it. As well as granite. And granite was interesting this week because a lot of us sort of dismiss stones, such as granite, as a building material. And actually it's composed of quartz and feldspar, which a lot of the tumble stones are actually composed of as well. It helps one to see the big picture. It helps to banish the negative traits of scepticism and train the user in the difference between belief and knowing. For relationships, for diplomacy. It was also rever revered by the Mayans, Mayans, um, original, Aboriginal tribes, sorry my brain is still a bit, as a sacred stone and offers protection and prosperity. And it teaches us something about realising the magical nature of things which often are disregarded and the folly in ignoring things such as stones and granite and things. But it also sort of teaches us that, you know, the way that we view things now is not necessarily the, the way that we should be viewing them, that we've lost a lot of knowledge, that we have forgotten a lot in the pursuit of this modern society. And I think that's very true with a lot of things. Um, I often think we've lost the ability to walk softly on this earth because of the modern obsession with materialism and we must have this and it sort of comes at the cost of the environment. I've seen a lot of masquerade masks this week and poppies, both in life and imagery. I actually went to the market midweek and saw a masquerade mask and I was like oh my goodness because I never see masquerade masks in in person and there was one on the stall and it's, it wasn't my cup of tea looking at it but it was there and looking at me you know <clears throat> so for masquerade masks I think that harkened back to uh, the shaman mask which we're going to discuss in a minute and poppies have been everywhere this week and there are a load of them lining my drive <clears throat> it's feminine for moon, water, fertility, love, sleep, money and luck. A call perhaps to pay attention to dreams. They have been vivid this week. Uh, <laughs> I had a dream where I was bitten on the wrist by a vampire. And it went along the lines of, I'd been in the service of a family who I think were at war with the vampires. <laughs> And there was this really horrendous vampire general who was known for his abusive treatment of people. And then his commander, who was known as a, a better, more caring individual, and the commander is the one that actually took charge of me so that I wouldn't end up completely... <clears throat> I don't know. tortured, mutilated or whatever by the, the, the commander guy, by the captain, the, the head guy, and he bit me so I, on my wrist, so I then belonged to him. <laughs> as well as having dreams of not being prepared for exams at the school, horrifying in my mind, and waking up and being like, thank god I don't have exams anymore. <clears throat> at least not in that sense. A quote from Wild Woman Sisterhood. Wild Moon Woman. You were not made to be tame. You're an earthquake shaking loose everything that is not soul. Shake, woman, shake. I love that. I love that quote. The masquerade stuff is fascinating. I saw one at the market. It was gold, which isn't my thing. <clears throat> as well as hearkening back to the neither colon or crown fox art, shamanistic. Also had a mask. Masks of the shaman are representative of their guardian spirits and they believe that they can induce a state of trance by wearing these masks and establish a link with the said guardian spirit. can also be worn as a form of supernatural protection against dangers. And that was from Trance Shamanism, Body and Soul, 
by Rebecca Busak. There was also a picture with a masked man following that and the, the quote I must not fear, fear is the mind killer, fear is the little death that brings total obliteration. I will face my fear, I will permit it to pass over me and through me and when it has gone past I will turn the inner eye to see its path. Where the fear has gone there will be nothing, only I will remain June. And then I shared this yesterday, or the day before. Uh, I am not going to tell you what to believe. I am not going to tell you that you should believe in anything at all. I simply ask that you return the favour. I try to walk my path to the best of my ability with an open mind, an open heart and personal honour. You can only offer an example, nothing more, nothing less. What you take from that is your business. How I live is mine. <clears throat> and then obviously I went to Ely yesterday and... and got a whole bunch of crystals and a lot of them are to do with breaking down the walls of what was within yourself and becoming who you are meant to be. I won't go through all of them again because I've just done the video so <clears throat> the crystals <coughs> excuse me the crystals are on the crystal hall video so we'll have the poem and then we'll talk a little bit. The poem is my own intellectual property, all rights reserved. I am all, I am the spark, a lightning flash amidst the dark. I am the call, I am the song, to set to right all that is wrong. For you can know and you can see with open heart and clarity. So that has been this week. In a nutshell. Interestingly enough, I found a walnut shell. <laughs> so, <clears throat> it's been very much about opening. And it's feeling very much like the precursor to opening the self to new experiences, new ways of thinking and a new way of living. I have the sense that this week has sort of been signs of awareness, of breaking down what was, of letting go what no longer serves, of cracking through the psychological barriers that we place around ourselves which make us think we can't do something, getting us ready for that revving up of energy that we have to bring to the table to rev up and do what we want to do, become who we want to be, create what we want to create and believe and have self-belief. There's been doubt everywhere this week and it's it's the passion killer. Doubt is the passion killer. It makes us think we can't do something, that we can't be something, that we can't live up to our full potential and we should be slamming the hammer down on that fear and breaking through it and allowing that to to be what was and not what is so we can move forward. I've seen a lot of fear this week as well, like other other people's fear of themselves, their personal power and goddesses and things, and that comes from doubt and from misunderstanding, and there is a huge vibe of know yourself this week, you know, one of the uh, witchy creeds, know thyself. Which isn't an easy thing, people think that's an easy thing. Oh, I know me. Yeah, you, you don't. Until you, until you have been through spiritual growth, which is like... And this is a continuous process whereby, you know, you're uh, tearing those walls down and growing from that. That's spiritual growth. So there we go. That is this week's Ogham. That is the last Ogham. Gonna have uh, a new format from this week on. For a little while and we will talk about that soon. Many blessings. <laughs>